welcome to episode five of the Jody Bunting podcast. My name is Jody Bunting, and today we have our special guest, who is my friend Rachel Holmes. Hey, woo! Now you Jody, know me. You may know Rachel, especially if you live around Derby, as an instructor from David Lloyd Derby. But she's actually an entrepreneur, a fit pro creator, presenter, educator, and get this: she's even a featured creator on Facebook. Oh. Could you be more famous, Rachel? <laughs> I know, and I'm from Derbyshire. Yep, I do all of those things. I've been in the industry a million years. So yeah, I've got I've done a lot in this industry. And yeah, locally, I still teach locally in Derby um, at the David Lloyd Club, which I've done since it opened. So yeah, I know a lot of people in the area. And just to let you know where I first met Rachel, I remember when I first qualified with YMCA Exercise to Music, there used to be two providers sending information and Rachel's face used to be on some of the CDs, you know, CDs back in the day. Uh, And then suddenly when I joined David Lloyd a few years later, that's where I bumped into her at one of her aerobic conditioning fitness Pilates classes. Yeah, it was. And you came along, didn't you? That's a long time ago. You, you, in my head, you're the kind of the, the queen of choreography. Did you know <laughs> that just one of your classes gave me like a year's worth of choreography for my basic <laughs> level classes? You That's are joking. How they were. <laughs> That's made my day. I love to hear that. I don't really teach choreography anymore because it's the whole industry has just changed so much. So it's all hit now. The class that I used to do at David Lloyd that was all choreography, that went and it's hit and conditioning now, which is such a shame because that... That art form of grapevines and hamstring curls. There's only a few people now teach like that. It's um, it's old. It's classed as old school, Jodie. Yes, it is. <laughs> we are old school. We are old school. I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> and the reason that you're, you know, you are so successful is because although you're great at the old school, you just bring <laughs> in the new ideas. And this is where today we're going to be talking a little bit about buggy beat and also fitness for new mums. So first of all, tell us a little bit about. How do you keep fit as a mum? It's hard. I'm not going to lie. And I think um, contrary to all the what's on TV and this morning and loose women and magazine articles, it is a struggle when you've got so much going on in your life, especially when you have a new baby. It's so overwhelming. There's so much to do, remember, and it, it can be very, very difficult. So I think it's got to be simple and it's got to be doable. And we are living in an area now where you can get great sessions online. So you don't even have to leave the door, get out of the house. You can do something online at home. But I think the best thing and when I had my little boy is getting outside and walking with your push chair and your pram and just weaving that into your daily routine, not only from, for your physical, from a physical standpoint, from a mental standpoint, getting outside, getting some vitamin D, fresh air, having a walk, no phone, and just enjoying that 10 or 15, however many minutes you can manage, it can be transformational, it really can. So it's just starting off with something really small, fitting it into your day regularly and doing something that you enjoy. Yeah. So how does the Boogie Beat uh, program work? Is it all about different intensities and levels or is it more more of a community? Yeah, it's right. It's a good question. Um, It was. When I first designed it, we were going to do HIIT and workouts and I I, I created all these class plans for it. But actually, when it comes down to it, it's just mums and not just mums, actually. Uh, we We get grandmas, we get dads, we get partners it's for anyone that's got with a baby or a toddler in a push chair and wants to just come together and do some gentle exercise outdoors in the park and we do it in all weathers so we've done it in the snow we do it in the rain we do it in the cold we do it in the sunshine and and it really just it becomes now we all get together we do a warm-up with the push chairs um, and a general warm up joint mobility. And if it's cold, you know, we get moving quite quickly. And then we tend to do more of a circuit. So it's more of a walk, it's a power walk. And then as we go around the power walk, we do various exercises. We might start and do some squats, do some tricep dips, depending on what what the weather is and where we are. Um, But we generally keep moving for about 40 minutes and finish with some stretching. And then in the sunshine, we usually bring a picnic and everyone sits and we get the we get the kids out of the push chairs and we sit down and have a drink and, and some food. And it's the community, it's the chat, it's the social engagement, it's the interaction. And that is priceless. Um, and getting and as I say, getting outdoors with other people, just sharing stories, it's it's really, really powerful and it's it's really needed as a as a new mom. And you know, with anyone that's with a baby all day or a toddler 
you do need some adult, <laughs> you need some adult stimulation yeah. and physical stimulation. So it, it hits lots of different markers. And how do you think um, people can motivate themselves to get involved with that or just do exercise generally when you're a new mom? It is hard. And I think you've got to give yourself time for sure um, and be kind and patient with yourself. It's, it's life changing when you have a little one and it does take it takes time to get used to your new life and a new routine um, and being a mom and everything that that brings and enjoying that that time is important too. Um, and I think, you know, when you're ready to start doing some exercise, you know, if you're sort of feeling tired, if you're if your eating's a little bit um, a little bit haphazard and you, you don't feel that you're looking after yourself well, I think there's a time when you think, okay, now I need to get back into a routine, get back into exercising regularly, and and looking at my uh, looking at your food and making some healthy choices, um, and just moving slowly through. You know, being really gentle with yourself is important, I think. Now, I've got some questions from some of my slimmers, which is okay. the reason why I'm doing this podcast, actually, because they want an expert on uh, mums who exercise. So the first okay. question is, how do I fit fitness around my kids? OK, um, you've got to do something consistently. So what can you manage consistently? What? often people do is right I'm going to join a gym they join David Lloyd or they join the leisure center and they go all at it for two or three weeks and then it's unsustainable they can't keep that level up for lots of different reasons you know kids become ill you know routine changes all of the time so it's starting off slowly and gently so just doing something once or twice a week that you can consistently do for the future so that might be doing a class it might be going to a class it might be saying that you're going to go out walking two or three times a week it might be that you are going to do some online fitness two or three times a week, but something you can do consistently that fits into your lifestyle and accepting that things will come up. Um, and it, that is inevitable with life, with little kids. It always does. And don't beat yourself up and just continue along. That doesn't mean you have to stop just because you've missed a week. You don't stop. You continue on. It's, it's part of the journey. You're in it for the long haul. I think that's my biggest tip for 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 keeping going and starting exercise. It's very similar to um, like nutritional advice, really, isn't it? Just, you know, we all we have these plans, but you've just got to keep on going no matter what stumbling block comes up. And they will. Stressful situations will be happening all the time. Um, and, and it's very easy to let that get derailed. It's mindset, Jodie, isn't it? You do a lot of mindset yeah. work. It's not a six week quick fix or a 12 week quick fix. This is it for life. So you're, you're setting out your stall, as we say in the Midlands, for the long term. And if that looks like one class a week, OK, let's start with one class a week or one session a week and then let's build up. Maybe you can add on to that two sessions, three sessions. But whatever needs to be done is consistency. That's the key. Then our next question is easy exercises that can help to get rid of my mum pouch. And then in bracket, she's put in the day while with the baby. OK, I get this. So there's nothing that you can do that will spot reduce. So you can't do two hours of sit ups or crunches or planks or abdominal exercises and think that that's going to that's going to change. It needs to be a multi pronged attack. <laughs> so that means looking at what you're eating. Um, and again, not doing anything drastic, especially if you're breastfeeding, making sure that you're eating a balanced diet. And I would recommend just three healthy meals a day, maybe cut down on your snacking. And the big one is close the kitchen at night time. Once you've had your evening meal, no walking back in and eating and snacking when you're not hungry, mindless eating, because that's going to disturb your sleep. And if you are getting up in the night as well, your sleep is already going to be disturbed. So you want to try and give yourself the best shot of having a good quality night's sleep if you can. So eating late at night can disturb your sleep, as can drinking caffeine in the afternoon. That can often keep you up as well. So it's it's setting yourself up for success. But, you know, everything counts. It's not just five minutes of exercise. It's, you know, if you're running around doing your housework, if you are, uh, you take the baby for a walk in the pram, if you are, you know, doing your windows, you're doing your squats, whatever, whatever you're doing, it all adds up. You can wear a step counter so that you're getting your 10,000 steps in. But 
specific exercises for your lower abdominals. Pilates is wonderful. Um, and that can really help. You can do simple Pilates exercises, you know, really gentle where you're working your pelvic floor muscles and your deep core. And you can work your pelvic floor muscles, whatever you're doing. You know, I could be working my pelvic floor muscles right now, Jodie, and you would not know. <laughs> So it's incorporating everything um, during the day. It's not just about five or 10 minutes of exercise that you might do. It's, it's, it's everything. It's moving through the day is what you're, what you're looking for. So what about these dodgy videos on YouTube, Rachel, where they've got the baby and they're like planking <laughs> abdominal crunch. They, they do like twisting with the baby. <laughs> and I've done some of them. <laughs> Is this recommended? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I, I think it can be a lot of fun. It can be a lot of fun doing some, some exercises with your baby with you because, um, you know, that bond, baby can feel your heartbeat and, you know, it, it can be really fun. But babies are heavy. They're yeah. really heavy. And if you've, had, if you've had a cesarean section and then you stop, you know, bench pressing your baby and your baby was 10, 12 pound. You know, that's heavy. That is heavy. Um, but, you know, incorporating your baby with your exercise. So, you know, I used to do um, exercise. I do like a light sort of like a light hit workout, a little circuit at home. So my little, my son would be sort of in the middle of the carpet and I'd be doing a few little exercises around him. Um, I used to love it. I used to yeah. keep him really entertained. Um, but you know, you, 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 you are looking after your, your baby. So it's, it is hard, but it's just incorporating your exercise wherever you can. If your baby's going down for a nap, that was a big one for me in the afternoon. My little boy would have like an hour's nap. So that was it. As soon as he went down, right, boom, I would go and do some exercise then. Um, and I would always do some online exercise, something in, in the house. Um, and it doesn't, again, it doesn't need to be an hour's class. It might be just 20 minutes of gentle yeah. exercise. You know, it, it's, and then, then some days, you know, if your baby doesn't nap, that's okay. You know, you can't beat yourself up. If you haven't got that time, that window closes, you just do it the following day. Um, it's, you know, I know I keep saying it, but it's being really kind with yourself. There's a long way to go for a new mom. Give yourself at least a year really to get yourself back into fitness there's no rush whatsoever it's just take your time think of your health first and then you can you know you can start to work on it the older your your baby gets so give yourself plenty of time right now our next question is food one okay food and vitamins that help with reducing saggy skin i know it's a similar answer to the kind of one that we've just done yeah it is yes yeah um Vitamins and minerals. Uh, do you take I, any supplements or did you? Yeah, at the moment I take vitamin E. Uh, yeah. I take that because we've got not much daylight, have we, at the moment. So we take that. Um, I don't actually, but I really focus on eating a balanced diet. So um, focus on increasing the protein, maybe lower down carbohydrates, plenty of fruits and vegetables, and really try and stick to three meals a day. Um, I used to do some intermittent fasting. I don't do that anymore. Um, and don't snack. That's the big one. No snacking. Cause when probably going to talk about this, yeah. but when you're at home <laughs> with a baby and like it was in lockdown, it's so easy to just have a complete snackathon all day. You never actually sit down and have a proper meal. You just keep going backwards and forwards to the fridge you know, during the day. And yeah, that's not the best. You need to focus on, you know, sitting down with your food, eating slowly and mindfully, enjoying the taste and the texture. And that can be hard when you're feeding a baby, you know, when you've got a baby there as well, not easy. Um, but it does need to be a priority that you, that you do focus on the food that you're eating and you've not got the telly on and you're not looking at your phone and you're not doing something else. You're completely focused on the food. It's amazing how many people lose weight by just sitting down, eating their food slowly, enjoying it, drinking enough water, you know, being adequately hydrated and just being healthy, walking, light exercise and focusing on stress management. It's amazing how many people lose weight in that way without doing anything extreme or difficult or, or hard. So going back to supplements, I think if you're eating a balanced diet, if you are eating plenty of fruit and vegetables, you know, protein, a mix of animal and plant protein, and you are, you have some good quality carbohydrates and they don't have to go without carbohydrates. Um, 
you, you know, you don't always need a supplement. But if you are feeling that you are deficient, then I would always say, go and have a chat with your GP, see what yeah. the GP says and have a chat with them rather than, because so many of the supplements that we see online are completely ineffectual anyway. You are wasting your money. And if you get the dosage wrong, your body doesn't store them. So you just generally tend to wee them all out, don't it's you? It's a waste so, of money, isn't it? Yeah, it's a waste of money. So... I think do what you can, first of all, yourself and, and up the quality of your diet um, and then see how you feel after that. And again, if you're a new mum and you're feeling really tired, you must go to the doctors and maybe have, get your iron levels checked, get your thyroids checked, things like that, because pregnancy can have a big effect on thyroids and also your iron levels. You know, you could be anemic. There's lots of different things. So it's important not to to maybe self-diagnose yeah. and go and go and get go and get vitamin D and minerals when you don't need them so check see what the doctor says first of all i would say what do you think to collagen because i've seen these advertised so much these days i know no, little capsules with the celebrity. i do yeah it's a waste is, i've never taken them uh what do you think do you do you what do you think to them i've actually done a little trial and i didn't feel any benefits myself personally but did you it, use the the one the one that's advertised everywhere is it what's the one that you see all over social media something the, the kello one is it yeah the, yes the scottish fitness present not fitness friends tv yeah but yeah and, and i just think if you're specifically lacking in that then fine but if you like you said if you're eating a healthy balanced diet i don't think there's any real need to because they're expensive as well they are expensive and and obviously skin is is um it's it's a little bit genetic hereditary some some different types of skin has more is more elastic -y than other people you know we're all individuals um it's it's such an individual thing it's, it's really hard to say uh i think balanced diet getting out fresh air getting some sunlight is important manage your stress a little bit if you can um and it you know it it is it's i don't know if any any supplements are going to help it like you say I've, although i've got ladies who swear by collagen yeah and say that it's really worked for them so horses for courses if you are feeling a bit lethargic maybe you feel like you need a boost my go-to meal is smoked salmon avocado and scrambled eggs what do you oh, go yes. for h what do I go for? What am I eating at the moment? I go in fads. I don't know if you do. I, I really concoct a meal that I really like, then I eat it. Oh, I'm having, I'm doing lots of, um, tell you what I'm doing at the moment, loads of chickpeas, butter beans, putting them all in a wok, a little bit of olive oil, and I love a stir fry, all different stir fries. Um, I eat that quite a lot. I like tofu. I know not everybody right. likes tofu. I think that, you know, I don't know if you found this in the lockdown because we were cooking so much at home and I was using my slow cooker all the time. I just really got fed up with eating a lot of meat, although I, I, I'm not a yeah. vegetarian or anything. So I started to switch to more, I started to really enjoy tofu again. I really like tofu. It's not for everybody, but it's really quick and easy. And I like beans and legumes, things like that. I've got a local lady up the road that delivers all food from the allotment so we have all healthy Perfect. vegetables and, and and seasonal veg quite a lot of seasonal veg um what else if i'm i'm really i like porridge in the morning uh, with linseeds and a few flax right. seeds um, but i often like just eggs on toast in the morning that's yeah. one of my favorite breakfasts i'm a very simple eater you like curries don't you and spicy foods as yeah. well I, i'm not a spicy food uh, fanatic but i've really um i've really tried now to eat we eat our sort of my last meal about six o'clock try and sit down and eat it and then the big focus is not to go back snacking in the evening because yeah. it really bothers my sleep i don't i wake up then if i'm eating late at night so i really yeah. try and focus on closing the kitchen the signs on the door do not go back in and that's it and you don't really need to it's just it's often yeah. just not even boredom i think it's that um it's really that distraction yeah. <laughs> isn't it so yeah, that's my, that fine. So my daughter's vegan, and I think all new mums kind of have this, I've got to feed my children yeah. the best. And this is why they do go down a plant-based route. You know, I actually love tofu. Also known on the Chinese menu as uh, bean, what's it called? Bean curd. That doesn't oh, yes, it is. It is bean curd. That's right. I forgot that. <laughs> but yeah, what... 
Are there any other, have you gone specifically that for your child or is it just generally for yourself? Oh God, when when I had Logan, I was going to, you know, he's going to play with wooden toys and eat avocados every day. <laughs> that was my plan. <laughs> you know, two days into it, I knew that wasn't going to happen. Um, oh gosh, I mean, my little boy is seven. Well, he's seven in March. It's... Um, well, it's, it's a whole different conversation, isn't it? Trying to get your children to eat healthily. It is really hard. It's not easy. Their taste buds are so... When he was a little baby, yes, he would have a mashed avocado and, and all of the fruits, fine. But now as he's gone to school, you know, it's hard to get him to eat vegetables. He might have some broccoli, you know, yeah. um, may have some broccoli, but it's not easy. Again, we, I just keep trying to eat by example. I don't talk about diet. I don't, we, you know, we we sit down and eat a meal together or he sits down with his nonna and granddad and we often have a meal together with them. Um, you know, and, and my mum and dad are still sort of that seventies mentality where it's, you know, meat and veg, sit down and we don't leave the table till everybody's eaten. We don't have tellies on, there's no food on, you know, no Which phone great, there. Isn't it? We have that old fashioned sort of, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know if it is old fashioned, but yeah, that's what yeah, we try is. and do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what we try and do. But when it's me and Logan, like in the morning, and I'm rushing to get out the door, and you know he's eating his breakfast, you know it's it's chaos. Breakfast is hard because he does it. He won't eat cereal. He'll have eggs and he'll have toast. And I'm always of the mindset, you know, I want him to go to school with a breakfast, and yeah. you know whatever that might be. Sometimes it's not the most healthiest, but you know he's he's eating something before he's gone out the door. It's not easy. They seem to go in phases with it. So. Yeah, it, it, it's a hard one. Um, I always I remember the kids in Egypt walking down the street on the way to school with a cucumber in their hand and nibbling it on, in the street. Is that what they did? Could, Is yeah. it? Could you imagine kids in these days? People would think they were crazy, wouldn't they? No. A cucumber yeah. cucumber on the way to school. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it, it's hard. It is hard to get your kids to eat. Well, it's hard to get my son to eat vegetables. He really has to do it at a push, but, you know, we keep trying. That's all we can do is lead by example, yeah. isn't it? Right, now we're going to switch it round. How do the adults stop eating the kids' oh food? Oh, my God. This is hard. Well, this is definitely, I've just touched on it. This is, for me, a definite hangover from the 70s, from being a 70s child and having to sit down at the table and not moving until the food has all been eaten. I can't bear to see wasted food. Are you like that? Yeah. I, I can't. Yeah. I struggle to to um throw food away in any way shape or form even now i really struggle with it um so it's so hard it's and it's so easy just and you can find yourself doing it completely mindlessly and it's yeah. not good again i think you've just got to you've either got to put it away in a tupperware if it's something that you can you can reuse regenerate it or it's got to go straight into the bin because if it sits around on the table you're yeah. going to eat it you know bread crust sandwich last yesterday we had we had some sandwiches and he wouldn't eat the crust so the crust sit there and they're literally saying to me eat me <laughs> eat me <laughs> you go no you've got to go in the you've got to go out to the birds <laughs> i also think you know kind of having a bit of a compost bowl in your kitchen where you oh that's a good bowl. idea because if you have got the main mentality that you, you don't want to waste anything you know it's good to actually know it's going somewhere to help to continue its journey instead of just throwing it in the bin so that's a great idea how do you do that like. What you literally just collect your things. Obviously, it's got to be a sealed container because it does start to stink after a few days. <laughs> In your kitchen. <laughs> yes. So you can either compost it yourself or local garden centres, stuff like that, will also take it off your hands. And I learned that tip from working in hotels because all of them have a kind of food bucket shall we so do they that's yeah, so interesting do this, just to get rid of the waste food because obviously oh, it's cheaper it. for them to compost it than it is to to throw it in the rubbish oh that's a that is a really good tip good tip um, jody there you go. I that's see it. you're bringing out the goodness in me, as always, Rachel. As <laughs> Right. Now, we can't talk about new mums without talking about Victoria Beckham. So everybody see, you know, and, and this is in the good way. You know, she's done a great job. She looks great after just giving birth when she leaves the hospital. However, I think a lot of mums feel like they've got this pressure to get fit after having a child. Yeah. So... You know, is it normal? Is it normal to give birth and then suddenly six months later you're back to a size six, size eight? 
Gosh, no. I mean, not for most people it isn't. Um, gosh, this is such a hard question because I really like Victoria Beckham. Um, oh, me she too. was very, 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 very slim to start with, wasn't she? Yeah. And she, when she was pregnant, she, from what I can remember, she was very, uh, her bump was quite small from what you said. I don't think you saw a phot photograph much when she was pregnant. I think it was only some, a yeah. bit. Um, I think I would imagine for celebrities, it's enormous pressure for them to to you know be spring back i think i mean we've even changed the narrative and the rhetoric around it i think i think it seems to be changing from what i'm seeing on instagram and and you know with with new mums um it's just so difficult i would imagine that somebody like victoria beckham has a chef and you know has somebody cooking meals for her maybe had a nanny you know has got help you know somebody that is 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 on their own all the time out all day bringing up their baby it's very difficult to to fit everything in um i just don't think it's realistic for most people i really really don't think it's realistically having said that when i start boogie bee you know there's lots of mums that that you know that do and there's other mums that don't everyone's on such an individual journey i don't think you can look at social media and definitely don't look at what celebrities are doing because you know, they may have surgery, surgery, the cost of surgery now is so much less than it ever was. Yeah. You know, when people are flying to Turkey and having all these procedures done and liposuction. So I just don't think you can believe, you can believe what you see. I really don't. I don't know. I'm not saying Victoria Beckham's had surgery at all, but I think you, it's unrealistically yeah. for most people. Wonderful. So... <laughs> Just to sum up then, it is all about improving your lifestyle, getting out walking. And the other secret I always tell my guys, especially to do with your core, is Pilates. Now, you yeah. are a Pilates expert. You're the creator of Fitness Pilates. So what are the main benefits of Pilates? Oh, main benefits are it's going to work your very deep core muscles, which is perfect when you had a baby. So in your pelvic floor, and it's going to really help with your abdominal muscle separation, bring them back together. It's going to help breathing. So that's going to help your pelvic floor, your diaphragm. Um, and Pilates is not just for the core now. It's all, it's, it's all the body. The whole body is worked when we do Pilates, but it's a much more mindful. It's slow. You concentrate. It's centering. Um, it's hugely popular and it just gains in popularity every year. More and more people join fitness Pilates classes around the country. So, yeah, and it's, it's just a wonderful one. Once you've had, once you've had your six week check and everything's okay, longer if you have, you've had a section, then you're able to come back to, to start doing very gentle fitness Pilates activities. Um, and you can build it up from there. So yeah, it's great for all body, great for mental clarity, concentration, precision, you know, there's, it's big ticks all round for postnatal. When I was working as a fitness manager, one of the questions I used to get asked is what's the difference between Pilates <laughs> and fitness Pilates? My answer used to be fitness Pilates is set to music and is more fun. What oh. would you say, Rachel? <laughs> so it takes the the guys of a regular group X class. So you'll do a setup, you'll do mobility, it's all to music. You'll do a standing section, a functional section. Then you'll go down on the floor and do mat work. And then you'll do back work and then finish off with a stretch and relaxation. So it's got all of the original principles of Joseph Pilates in, but it's just delivered in a more modern contemporary way so it's it's like a you know it's like a body conditioning type class but it's all all the principles are from pilates and it just moves forward i'm always constantly updating it and changing it and in line with new research using different pieces of equipment so it's always evolving it's ever evolving so that's the that's the key differences where mat work pilates is you know it's the same exercises it's the mat work exercises and it it doesn't often evolve it, it stays the same Great. Right. Thank you so much for joining us, Rachel. Where Thank can you. people get more information about Fitness Pilates and Boogie Beats? Okay. You can find me on my main Facebook page, which is Rachel Holmes Fit. And I'm live every day there on 10 past seven. So come and say hello, do a little workout with me. So yeah, you can join in at 10 past seven. Um, YouTube, I've got tons and tons of workouts on there. Again, Rachel Holmes <clears throat> and Instagram, I'm Rachel L. Holmes. And you'll even find me on TikTok as well. I'm actually doing pelvic floor work on TikTok at the moment. So if you want to work your pelvic floor, join me on TikTok. <laughs> Perfect for Christmas time. Thank right, you. Have a lovely Christmas, Rachel. I will. We'll see you again next time. Thank you. You will. Thanks, Jodie. Bye. Nice to see you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.
please remember to like, give me a comment, share with your friends and of course subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Rachel, what are your top tips for new mums? Number one is get outside in the fresh air with your pram and go walking as often as you can. Number two, uh, keep moving through the day. Do as much activity through the day as you can because it all adds up. And number three is be kind to yourself. Give yourself plenty of time to regain your fitness levels and eating a healthy, balanced diet. There's no rush. Enjoy being a new mom and just take your time.